Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. Hoffman and I am a fifth grade teacher at Delaware Elementary. I'm so glad that you are joining me today. In case I forget later, today's secret code word is garden. So keep that in your mind as we're traveling along today. We're gonna do some really tough math work today. So before we get going, we're gonna do just a quick um, refueling break. And what we're gonna do is just a five finger breathing. So to do this, all you need is just five fingers and one finger on the other hand. So you're gonna take that hand, lay it flat down, spread your fingers out as far as you can. Then you're gonna take the finger of your other hand and put it at the bottom of your thumb. Your thumb or your finger is gonna travel up your thumb and around the top and you're just gonna trace your hand this whole time. As you go up along your finger, you're gonna take a nice big deep breath in and then you're gonna let it out as you go down along the next finger. Another big deep breath in and a nice slow breath out. Another deep breath in and a nice slow breath out. We're going to do that two more times. Another deep breath in, nice deep breath out. Last time, big deep breath in and a nice breath out. Great job. Now that you've got your brain moving and you're ready to go, I wanna tell you a little story. So this last week, my kids and I have been playing a lot of basketball. Don't laugh at me, I'm a terrible, terrible basketball player. However, I kept count in each game of how many times I was able to score a basket. And I put that data right here on these cups. So if you'll look, the first game, I was able to score four baskets. My second game was my worst. I was only able to score one basket. In my third though, I was a rock star. There were five baskets that I made in that one. And then my fourth game, I had three baskets. And in my last fifth game, I had two baskets. So what I've done is I've put each of my um, cups here and inside of each cup, I've placed a crayon to represent each time I made a basket. So in this cup, there were four crowns. And in this one, there is one. In this one, there are five, three, and two. What we're gonna be doing today is finding the mean of a set of data. So it's possible that this is a math term that you've heard before. If not, no worries, we're gonna talk through it. So I wanna show you how I found the mean or the average of the number of baskets I made in each basketball game. But I'm not gonna talk to you today about the math just yet. So I just want you to watch and follow along and see if you can figure out what math is happening as we do this work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of my buckets and I'm gonna dump out my crayons. So I'm gonna take those four out, take this one out. There's five more and three and two, so think about that for just a moment. Think about what happened with my crowns. They were all separated into each of my five different games, and now they're all laying together in one big, huge pile. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redistribute those crowns evenly into my cups. So I'm gonna turn these numbers around so that your brain's not focusing so much on that number anymore. But I want you to think about how many crowns now are gonna go into each cup. So one at a time. I'm gonna take my crowns, place them back into my cups, but I want you to notice the way that I'm doing this. I started at the beginning and I put one crayon in each cup. I'm gonna do that again. And I'm gonna keep going until all of my cups have the same number of crayons, whoops, inside of them. So I'm going one at a time. So now, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but what you should notice is that each of my cups now has the same number of crayons inside of it. So look closely how many crayons are in each cup. Right, three, so that's the number of, or the average or the mean number of goals I scored in, each, in, in basketball overall. So let's go back and think about that again. I'm gonna take my crayons and I'm gonna make them match my numbers one more time. So that was my first game, I scored one point. And in that game I scored, oh, not very many, just one. There's five here, three here, and two here. So now let's talk about the math. What really happened? 
I originally had four crayons in this one representing my four baskets. There was one here representing one basket, five here. What was the first thing that we did with those crayons? Think very carefully, think back. What was the first thing that happened? Yeah, so what we did is we dumped out all of these crayons and put them all together. Think about the math term that goes along with taking something or taking small pieces and putting them all together. Looking at my total here, what math did we just do? Yes, yeah, so we're adding. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 crayons all together. And if you take these numbers on this cup and you add those all together, guess what? 15. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to redistribute. Now think about it. I've got 15 crayons that I'm going to redistribute amongst my five cups and each cup gets the same amount. So I'm gonna make equal groups. So when you take a large amount and you distribute it into small amounts, what operation in math are you solving? Yeah, you're dividing. So I'm gonna take my crayons and redistribute them just like I did last time. One in each cup, whoops. So I had 15, goodness gracious, I had 15 total, I redistributed them or I divided them by my five cups. So now the number in each cup is three and 15 divided by five is three. So that's what we're doing today when we do our, um, our mean work. So let's try that one more time. This time I want you to try the math with me. So if you have a scrap piece of paper or something handy, that would be fantastic. We're going to work with just three cups. Um, have you ever heard of trash get ball? I am much better at trash get ball than I am at basketball. Trash get ball is really simple. You take a piece of paper, you wad it up, and you toss it into the trash can closest to you. What I like best about trash get ball is you can move the trash can closer. So here's what I did. I played trash get ball three times. The first time, I was a pro. I scored five times. So then I got a little bit cocky and thought, I can do this, and I moved the trash can back a little bit. I only made it three times. The last time I went all the way across the room, I only made it one time. I'm a terrible trash ball player. So let's think about this. Here are the three different sets of data that I have, five, three, and one. Think carefully back to our basketball games. What did we do with that data? What was the first step? Yeah, we took it all out and we added it. So what I want you to do is I want you to add on your paper five, plus three, plus one. So you're gonna do that for me, five plus three plus one. Think for just a moment. Hopefully you got nine, because five plus three is eight, plus one is nine. So the first step for finding the mean is taking all of our data and adding it together. Five plus three plus one gave us nine. So nine baskets total. Our second step then was to redistribute or divide. How many times did I play trash ball? How many different pieces of data did you see? Count my cups, one, two, and three. So we had three different pieces of data. So we're gonna take those nine, that nine, that total of nine, and we're gonna divide it by three. So I'm gonna do that with my cup and you're gonna do that on paper. You're gonna do nine divided by three. Some of you might even be able to do that in your head. Now hopefully you said that the mean or the average of my data was three and that you said nine divided by three was three. If you did, give yourself a nice big pat on the back. That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna move away from our manipulatives for right now. I'm gonna set these off to the side and we're gonna go into some more real world problems. So take a look right up here. I'm kind of short, I have to reach way up there. All right, so here are the steps for finding the mean. One thing that we uh, maybe didn't do that we should probably think about doing in the future is taking that numerical data and putting it in order from least to greatest. That's gonna help you later when you're working on things like mode or median um, and that kind of stuff. So that's something you could do. The second step is to take all of those pieces of data and add them together. So that's what we did when we dumped all of those crayons into one big pile and counted them. 
The third thing that you're going to do is then divide that sum, that total number, by the amount of data points you have. So for us, it was by the number of cups we have or by the number of games that we played. So let's take a second and let's try that together um, with some real world data. You're going to need a pencil and you're going to need a piece of paper or something handy to write on, unless you're just a super brainiac and can do all this math in your head. All right, so take a look. You're going to keep track of the goals for your soccer goals each time you play a game of soccer. In the first five games, these are the scores that you made. You are a rock star, by the way, at soccer. You scored four in the first game, eight in the second game, two, and then six, and then finally 10 goals. And I want to know what's the mean or what is the average of your data. So to figure that out, let's go back and think carefully. What was that first step? I'm going to click back for you just in case you forgot. The first step was to put all of our data points in order from least to greatest in numerical order. So let's do that. Okay, so looking up here, our smallest number is that two. I'm gonna cross it off because then I know I've already done it. My next smallest is four. I'm gonna cross it off. Then six, eight, and finally 10. So now I have everything in numerical order. Think of those as the crayons inside the cup. The next step is gonna be to take all of those numbers and add them together. These numbers are a little bit bigger, so you can chunk them if you'd like. Go ahead and take a second and you add yours, and I'll add mine, and we'll see if we come up with the same answer. I'm gonna chunk a little bit here. I'm gonna slow down just a minute and give you just a second to finish up that last piece. Looks to me like we should come up with the number 30. So when we add all of that data together, we end up with the number 30. That was our sum total. The next step, the last step, is to divide that total by the amount of data points we have. So let's go back. How many different games did we play? One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna take that total and we're gonna divide it by the number of games we played. So we're gonna do 30 divided by six. Whoops, got a little spot there. So think in your head for just a moment. 30 divided by six. If you struggle with that division, you can turn it backwards into multiplication and think six times what equals 30? If you're thinking five, then I think you are absolutely right because 30 divided by six is five. So the mean of our data on this one is 30, or is five, excuse me, gracious. All right, so let's try this one more time. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to try it on your own before I jump in. So take just a second and look at this next bit. This time you're gonna collect some coins from the couch. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but sometimes you can get really rich doing that especially if somebody in your family's got loose pockets. My dad used to always drop change into the couch. Um, so you're collecting lots of data here. You've collected um, coins for six days in a row now. And these are your, your amounts. You found five cents, 13 cents, 29 cents, eight cents, 15 cents, and two cents. So think for a moment, go all the way back. What was the first step before we do any adding What's first? Yeah, we need to put everything in order from least to greatest. So take a second and do that. Here's all your data points. You're gonna put them in order from least to greatest. When you're done, please make sure that you have all six numbers. Don't leave one out. Okay, let's see if we have the same numbers in the same order. I think two is my smallest number, followed by five, and then eight, and then 13, and then 15, and then that last one, man, this day I got really lucky, I found 29 cents. Okay, this one's got a little bit tougher math, so as you're doing that next step, be careful. Go slow, chunk your numbers. Remember that next step? 
Think about what's first. What do we do with those crowns? We did what with them when we took them out of the cup? Yeah, we added them. So what I want you to do is take just a moment. I want you to add these all together. You do yours. I'm going to be thinking about mine. We'll see if we come up with the same answer. Okay, now that you've gotten a start ahead of me, I'm going to take a second over here on the side and I'm going to add mine. And we'll see when we're finished if we come up with the same answer. I think I'm going to go this way this time. So in my head, I'm going to take this 8 and this 2 and put it together. That gives me a 10 here. So I've combined a couple of numbers here. I've combined the 8 and the 10. The only one that I'm going to have left now to add is going to be that 5. So I'm going to bring my 67 over here. Okay, so I think if I'm correct, we managed to collect in six days 72 cents. That's almost a candy bar from the couch. Okay, so I've added all of my data. Now that next step, remember we took all of the crowns, we placed them all on the table. What was the next step? What did we do? Yeah, we divided. So we're going to take that 72 and we're going to put it in our division box. The next part though, we have to figure out what number we're going to divide by. How many days did we collect data or how many days did we collect coins from the couch? We can go back in our problem and look, or we can just count our data points here. Looks to me like we collected data for six days, or we collected coins for six days. Ooh, that one's a little tougher division. Take a moment, see if you can find that division. 72 divided by six. Remember, you can always flip it around and think six times what equals 72 as well. If you're thinking 12, then I'm thinking you're correct because 72 times six, or 76, ah, let's try that again. 12 times six is 72. So the mean or the average amount we collected from our couch each day was 12 cents. Did you notice how each time we found the mean, it was somewhere between our smallest number and our largest number? Let's go back and see about that last one we did. Our smallest number was two, and our largest number was 10, but our mean was five. So when you're looking for the mean, if you get a number that's smaller than your smallest data point or larger than your largest data point, we've got a problem. We need that mean to be right close to in the middle. All right, so coming back here. There's a lot of ways that you can try this project at home to collect your own data. One of my favorite things to do is to collect data. I know I'm a big nerd, but that's okay. Some of these can be fun. So take a look. You can use a watch that has a second hand on it. These are so much fun. All you need is 30 seconds. So you can hold your breath, or maybe not 30 seconds. Maybe you're a genius and you can hold your breath for two minutes, I don't know. But you have someone time you holding your breath for as long as you can. And then they're gonna hit that stopwatch when you get done. And you're gonna do that three or four times. See what the average or the mean is for how long you can hold your breath. Make sure you breathe between those. We don't want anybody falling over. Um, the other thing that you can do, if you don't have a basketball goal, you can do trash get ball just like I did. It's super easy. You could even try something like taking a football and passing it to a friend or a brother maybe, or maybe your parents. How many times can you throw that perfect spiral? Or if you're like me, how many times can you actually catch the ball when it's being thrown to you? Um, so you can use that as your data. You can um, count how many times you can hop on one foot in 30 seconds. How many times can you skip a rope in 30 seconds? How many times can you spin in a circle? That one's really fun. 
take a break between it. We don't want you to get too dizzy. Or even something as simple as how many times can you write your name? If you're super lucky and you have a really short name, you might be able to write your name 50 times in 30 seconds. But if you have a really long name, maybe it's only seven times. Try those three or four different times to gather that data and see if you can find the mean. Remember that our secret word today is garden. And I hope that you enjoy all of these great ways to find mean. Thank you so much for joining me today.